Welcome to theCUBE's continuing coverage of AMD's fourth generation Epic launch. I've got a special guest with me today from Prowess Consulting. Uh, his name is Evan Tauger and he's a senior technical writer with Prowess. Evan, welcome. Hi, great to be here, thanks. So tell us a little bit about Prowess. What does Prowess do? Yeah, we're a consulting firm. We've uh, been around for quite a few years uh, based in Bellevue, Washington. And uh, you know, we do quite a few projects with folks from uh, Dell to a lot of other companies. And uh, you know, dive in. We have engineers, writers, production folks. Um, so pretty much, you know, end-to-end -end work doing research, testing, and writing, and uh, diving into different technical technical topics. So you, in this case, what we're going to be talking about is uh, some some uh, validation studies that you've done, mm -hmm. uh, looking at Dell PowerEdge servers that happen to be integrating in fourth gen Epic. Uh, processors from AMD. Mm -hmm. um, what, what were the specific workloads that, that that you were focused on in this study? Yeah, this particular one was uh, honing in on virtualization, right? Um, you know, obviously it's it's pretty much ubiquitous in the industry. Everybody uh, works with virtualization in one way or another. So just getting optimal performance uh, for virtualization was critical uh, or is critical for most businesses. So we just wanted to look a little deeper into you know, how do companies evaluate that? Uh, what are they going to use to make the determination for uh, virtualization performance as it relates to their workloads? Um, so uh, that led us to this study where we looked at some benchmarks and, and then went a little deeper under the hood to see what, um, what led to the results that we saw from those benchmarks. So, so when you say virtualization, does that include uh, virtual mm -hmm. desktop infrastructure or are we just talking about <clears throat> virtual mm -hmm. machines in general? Uh, no, it, it can include both. We looked at VMs, um, you know, thinking in terms of what about database performance when you're working in VMs, um, uh, all the way through to VDI and companies like uh, healthcare organizations and so forth, where it's common to roll out lots of virtual desktops and, and uh, performance is critical there as well. Okay, you 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 alluded to sort of looking under the covers to see, you know, where these mm -hmm. performance results were coming from. Um, mm -hmm. I, I assume what you're referencing is the idea that it's not just all about the CPU when you talk about a system. Mm -hmm. uh, am I correct in that assumption? And yeah, what, absolutely. What can you what can you tell us? Well, you know, for companies evaluating, there's there's quite a bit to consider, obviously, right? So they're looking at not just raw performance but power performance. Um, so, you know, that was part of it. And, and then what makes up that, um, those factors, right? So certainly CPU is critical to that, but then other things come into play like the RAID controllers. Um, so we looked a little bit there. And then uh, networking, of course, can be critical uh, for um, configurations that are relying on, on good performance on their networks, both in terms of bandwidth and, and just reducing latency overall. So interconnects as well would be a big part of that. So with with um, PCIe Gen five or or mm -hmm. five zero, uh, pick your pick your pick your moniker, right? Uh, um, you know, in 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 this in the infrastructure game, we're, we're often we're often playing a game of whack a mole, looking for the bottlenecks, you know, chasing mm -hmm. the bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. uh, PCIe five opens up a lot of bandwidth for memory and things like RAID controllers and NICs. Um, I mean, is the right. bottleneck now just our imagination, Evan? Have we reached a point where there are no <laughs> bottlenecks? What, what, what did you see when you ran mm -hmm. these tests? What, at what, you know, what were you able to stress to a point where it was saturated, if anything? Yeah, well, first of all, I should point out, we didn't, these are particular tests were ones that we looked at uh, industry benchmarks and, and, okay. and we were examining in particular to see where world records were set. Um, and so we uncovered a few specific servers, PowerEdge servers, um, that were were pretty key there, or had a lot of um, were leading in the category in a lot of areas. So that's what led us to then, okay, well, why is that? What's what's in these servers, and what's responsible for that? So in a lot of cases, they uh, we saw these results even with um, you know uh, Gen four PCIe Gen four. So uh, there were situations where clearly there was benefit from. Uh, faster interconnects and and especially NVMe for uh, RAID, um, you know, for supporting NVMe and SSDs. But all of that just 
leads you to uh, the understanding that it means it can only get better, right? So going from Gen 4 to Gen, if you're seeing great results in, on Gen 4, then Gen 5 is probably going to be, you know, blow that away. Um, and in this case, Gen it should 5 be even right. better. In this case, Gen 5, you're referencing PCIe. As PCIe, opposed, right. Yeah, as That's right. And That's then it. the same thing with Epic actually holds true. Yeah, Some yeah. of the records, we saw records set for both uh, third and fourth gens so, uh, with Epic. So uh, the same thing there. Anywhere there's a record set on the third gen, you know, makes us really, we're really looking forward to going back and seeing over the next few months uh, which of those records fall and are broken by newer generation uh, versions of these servers once they actually rev to the newer generation processors, um, you know, based on, on what we're seeing for the for uh, what those processors can do. Not only in, uh, yeah, sorry, no, just no, say, not only in terms of raw performance, but as I mentioned before, the power performance because they're they're very efficient, and that's a really critical consideration, right? Um, I don't think you can overstate that uh, for companies who are looking at, um, you know, have to consider. Uh, expenditures and power and cooling and meeting sustainability goals and so forth. So, so that was really an important uh, category in terms of what we looked at was that power performance, not just raw performance. Yeah. I want to, I want to get back to that. Uh, that that's, a, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, we should probably give uh, credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. which, which Dell PowerEdge servers are we talking about that were tested and Mm -hmm. and, uh, what did those interconnect components look like from uh, from a story um, perspective? Yeah, so we focused primarily on a couple benchmarks that seemed most important for real world performance results for virtualization: uh, TPCXV and uh, VMark 3.x. Uh, the TPCXV that's where we saw uh, PowerEdge R7525, R7515. They both had top scores in different categories there. Um, that benchmark is great for looking um, at database workloads in particular, right? Running in virtual virtualization settings. And then the VMMark 3.x uh, was critical. We saw good, good results there for the 7525 and the R7515, as well as the R6525 um, in that one. And, and that included... Um, uh, sorry, just checking notes to see which yeah, results no, 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 it's that um, included results for uh, uh, power performance. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that's where we we could see that. So we kind of uh, we saw this in a range of servers that included both third gen AMD Epic and uh, newer fourth gen as well. As I mentioned, um, the RAID controllers were critical in the TPCXV. I uh, don't think that came into play in in the VM Mark test, but but they were definitely part of the TPCXV benchmarks. So that's where the rate controllers would make a difference, right? And uh, in those tests, I think they're using PERC 11. So, you know, the newer PERC 12 uh, controllers right. there. Yeah, um, so again, we'd expect to see continued, you know, gains uh, in newer benchmarks. Um, that's what we'll be looking for over the next several months. Um, yeah, so I think uh, if I've got my Dell nomenclature down, performance, but no, no, Power Edge rate controller. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, right. With, with Broadcom, uh, you know, powered by Broadcom. That's right. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So isn't isn't the Dell naming scheme there a perk? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. But back to your comment about power. So you've you've had a chance to take a pretty deep look at the latest stuff coming out. You're confident mm -hmm. that because uh, some of these servers are going to be more expensive than previous generation. Now, a mm -hmm. server is not a server is not a server. But mm -hmm. uh, some are awakening to the idea that there might be some sticker shock. Um, you're confident that the bang for your buck, the bang for your kilowatt hour mm -hmm. is actually going to be beneficial. We're actually making things better, faster, stronger, cheaper, more energy efficient. We're continuing on that curve. That's what I would expect to see, right? I mean, of course, can't speak to, to pricey without knowing, you know, where, where the dollars are going to land on the servers. But but uh, I I would expect to see that because you're you're getting gains in a couple of ways. I mean, one, if the performance increases to the point where you can run more VMs, right? Get more performance out of your VMs and run more total VMs or more VDIs, then there's obviously a good um, you know, payback on your investment there. And then as we were discussing earlier, just the the power performance ratio, right? So if you're bringing down your 
your power and cooling costs, if, if these machines are just more efficient overall, then you, you should see some gains there as well. So, um, you know, I think the key is looking at what's the total cost of ownership over, you know, a, a standard, like a three-year period or something, and, and what you're going to get out of it for your number of sessions, the performance for those sessions, and the overall efficiency of the machines. So, so just just to be clear, with these Dell PowerEdge servers, you were able to mm -hmm. validate world record performance. But mm -hmm. this isn't if you if you look at CPU architecture, PCIe bus architecture, mm -hmm. memory, uh, you know the class of memory, the class of rate yep. controller, the class of NIC. Yep. Those those were not all state of the art in terms of at least what has been recently announced. Correct? Because you right. right. PCIe 4.0. So to your point, with world records with that, with that, you've got next gen rate controllers coming out, mm -hmm. next gen NICs coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if the if the motherboard was PCIe 5 with commensurate memory, mm -hmm. all of those things are getting better. Exactly right. I mean, you're you're really you're just eliminating bandwidth constraints, latency constraints, you know, all of that should should be improved. Um NVMe, um, you know, just collectively, all these things just open the doors. Um, you know, letting more more bandwidth through, reducing all the latency. Those are those are all pieces of the puzzle, right? That come together, and and it's all about finding the weakest link and eliminating it. And I think we're reaching the point where we're we're removing the biggest constraints from the from the systems. Okay, so so I guess is it fair to summarize to say that. Um, with this infrastructure that you tested, you were able to set world records. This during this year, I mean, over the next several months, things are just going to get faster and faster and faster and faster. That's what I would anticipate. Exactly right. If they're setting world records with these machines before some of the components are are you know the absolute uh, latest, it seems to me we're going to just see a continuing trend there, and and more and more records should fall. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that goes because uh, it's already good. And I think the, the return on investment is pretty good there. So I, I think it's it's only going to get better as, as these roll out. So let me ask you a question that's a little bit, a uh, li little bit off topic. Uh, okay. <laughs> kind of, um, mm -hmm. you know, we see these gains, you know, we're all familiar with Moore's law. We're familiar with, um, mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, the advancements in memory and, and bus architecture and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, we just covered supercompute uh, 2022 in Dallas a couple of weeks ago. And it was mm -hmm. fascinating talking to, talking to people about advances in AI uh, that will be possible with new architectures. You know, most of right. these supercomputers that are running right now are N minus one or N minus two. Mm -hmm. um, infrastructure, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're PCIe three, right? Um, and uh, maybe two generations of processors old, because you don't just throw out a hundred thousand CPU uh, supercomputing environment every eighteen months. It doesn't work that way. Exactly. Do you, do you have an opinion on this question of the qualitative versus quantitative increase in computing moving forward? Um, and do you, I mean, do you think that this new stuff that you're starting to do tests on is going to power a fundamental shift in computing? Or is it just going to be more consolidation, better power consumption? Do you think there's an inflection point coming? What do you well, think? That's a, that's a great question. That's, that's a hard one to answer. I mean, it's, it's probably a little bit of both because certainly there will be better consolidation, right? Um, but I think that, you know, the systems, uh, it works both ways. It just allows you to do more with less, right? Um, and you can go either direction. You can you can do what you're doing now on on fewer machines, um, you know, and get get better value for it um, or reduce your footprint. Or you can go the other way and say, "Wow, this lets us add more machines into the mix and take our our level of performance from here to here," right? Um, so it just depends on what your focus is. Certainly with with areas like you know HPC and AI and ML, um, having the ability to expand what you already are capable of by adding more um, machines that can do more is going to going to be your your main uh, concern. But if you're more like a small to medium sized business and the opportunity to to do what you were doing on on a much smaller footprint and for lower cost, that's really your your goal, right? Um, so I think. 
think you can use this in either direction and, and it should, should pay back in uh, a lot of dividends. Yeah, th thanks for your thoughts. It's an interesting subject moving forward. Um, yeah. You know, uh, sometimes it's easy to get lost in the minutia of the bits and bites and bobs of all the components we're studying, but they're powering something that uh, that's going to affect effectively all of humanity as we move forward. Um, what else? So what yeah. else? What else do we need to consider when it comes to um, what you've what you've just validated in the mm -hmm. uh, virtualization testing? Anything else? We anything we left out? I think we had all the key points or most of them. It's, you know, really, uh, it's just keeping in mind that it's all about the, the full system, the components, not, you know, the processor is obviously a key, but um, just removing uh, blockages, right? Uh, freeing up, getting rid of latency, improving bandwidth, all these things come to play. And then the power performance, as I said, I, I know I keep coming back to that, but, you know, we just... In, in a lot of what we work on, we just see that businesses, that's a really big concern for businesses um, and uh, finding efficiency, right? And uh, especially in an age of constrained budgets, that's that's a big deal. So uh, it's really important to have that power performance ratio. And that's one of the key things we saw that stood out to us in, in some of these benchmarks. So, Well, it's a big deal for good. me. Yeah, I, I live yeah. in California, and I know exactly how much I pay for a kilowatt hour of electricity. I, I bet. Yeah, my friends that's... in other places don't even know. Yeah, so I totally understand the power constraint question. Yeah, it's not going to get better. So, <laughs> anything you can do there, right? Yeah. Well, Evan, this has been great. Uh, thanks for sharing the results that Prowess has come up with. Third-party validation that, you know, even without the latest and greatest components in all categories, Dell mm -hmm. Power and servers are able to. Set uh, set world records, and I anticipate that those world records will be broken in 2023. And I expect that Prowess will be part of that process. So thanks, thanks for that. Uh, for the rest of us here at the Cube, I want to thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for continuing coverage of AMD's fourth generation Epic launch. Uh, for myself and for Evan Tauger, thanks so much for joining us.